Okay, welcome back to Two Pro TV. It's the average golfer. I'm back at Four Golf Chester. It is wicked out there. Shutter is staying down while I record a couple of these intros before we get started. Um, right, we did, or I did, a little bit of a head to head last week. It was looking at the modern drivers, or at least 2018 drivers. I've seen considerable gains in the distances that I've achieved, and always question marks thrown over how that occurs when according to data and limitations on on clubs and all the other aspects that affect um, the performance of or potential performance of a golf club in someone's hands i understand all of that but nevertheless i've seen the gains particularly this last few months in the latest releases and i want to do a series of videos where i just look at seeing if that continues throughout brands so this morning, last week, I did the M4 versus the R15, a tailor made. This week, and this again is because at um, Thor Golf Chester, there's quite a wide range of second hand trading clubs. And I've managed to find a, uh, it's a G30 uh, LS Tech. It's, I got that dating back to 2014, 2015. So again, three or four years difference in terms of uh, the, the product technology, because I'm gonna put it up against a G400 Max. Um, now again, in last week's head to head, there was a lot of people that suggested that we should have the same shafts in the, uh, in the drivers, which I kinda, the whole point for me is if you're looking at a G30 driver from four years ago, for me to give you a good comparison, surely in my mind you'd want it with the shaft that you had access to at that time. But I also understand the analogy that we should be having the same shafts in and then we're just testing it is purely head, driver head versus driver head. So that's what I'm gonna do this week. No doubt there'll be some complaints about what I should have done instead of this. But anyway, we've gone with, it's a CB Alter stiff shaft. It's what, um, I've done all the testing with the G400 Max range, and that's what's gonna be in both drivers. Now this is set at nine degrees, and I've added 0 0.6 loft to it, because this is a 10.5 degree driver, and I've took one degree of loft out. So I think we're 0 0.1 degrees difference in terms of loft, but they're about as near as damn it as I can get to identical setups. Anyway, we're gonna do the same game as last week because everybody joined in and they appreciate that because it's a bit of fun. There's no winner or loser as such, it's purely a game and we've got their head-to-head -head comparison. So what do you think is gonna be the difference? Pick a winner and then pick maybe what the yardage difference you think may be as well. So uh, now is the time yet again, I'll hit the pause button, pick your winner and um, we'll see at the end who come out on top. Okay, so you've made your choice. I'm gonna say, like I said, I, I'm pretty comfortable with my analysis of clubs over the last few months in that I firmly believe, like I said, 2018 uh, numbers in, out of these drivers, it's certainly working for me anyway. The average golfer with inconsistent swing, plenty of variables, plenty of off-center hits. It seems to be having an impact on the numbers I'm producing. So I'm gonna stick with the G400 Max. Although I'm not looking at a massive yardage gain in this one, I don't think. What I found was the G400 Max, it's Ping have manufactured what they say is their most forgiving driver on the market, and it's the most forgiving driver they've ever produced. And I would back that up. I found all the dispersion numbers, I'm currently, I've been playing with this for the last few months, or, or whatever it is, six, seven weeks since I've had it. And I've got to say, I'm mightily impressed with the dispersion, the left and right. So I'm expecting a gain in yardage, but I'm expecting to be a lot tighter in terms of dispersion. LS Tech, obviously, I'm expecting this to be a lower spinning club. And again, that's where the yardage difference may well be not so great this, uh, this time around. But we'll soon find out. Um, we've got turbulators in the G G30. We've got a lot of uh, turbulators in the G400 Max. And I'm not going to talk about tech specs of the two clubs. You can go and look at individual videos on those to find out a bit more. Enough waffle, camera over, hit some golf ball, sit down, and uh, we'll discuss the findings and see if we can decide, uh, has technology moved on that great since the D30? We'll soon find out.
Okay, so golf balls hit, and I'm afraid I've had to come back into the warmth of uh, the Tioplo HQ, as I like to call it. Um, absolutely Baltic out there this morning, to be fair, and a uh, little bit of time to go through the numbers and uh, put together an overall assessment, I suppose. And uh, before I do that, I just want to talk about one noticeable thing um, in terms of sound between the two drivers. One of the things, and I've got the um, the G400 Max still in front of me now, the, uh, the G30 is back on the sale uh, rack at Four Golf. This forged face, there's two differences in it. One is the colour, and it's this light silver colour or lighter silver colour, which I think I've mentioned in the, uh, in the other review when I did this club. It's noticeable. It's sort of, the, the face stands out that little bit better for me somehow. They are the darker face on the G30, and he carried that right up into the, even into the G400s as well. I like this lighter face in colour, but the biggest noticeable difference is the sound and feel ultimately. It is a guy who works um, at Four Golf called in halfway through as I'd hit the G30 and my immediate response to him, it was like hitting a brick because it was really compared to, and again, I think this is one of the other issues that has perhaps moved on in this period that we're talking about. And again, the feel and sound out of the driver, it's a great soft feel out of this G400 Max something that they've again claimed to have done and 100% it is a massive difference and for me as opposed to the gunshot going off that I found with the G30 this is a lot softer the sound was a lot better so that's just something that I recognize straight away when I hit the two clubs so as you know we've got as far as I'm concerned as near as we can to identical we're testing purely the club head here shaft is identical I'm going to start by throwing up I think first of all, said it last week, I'll say it again and make sure I try and reiterate this point. There is no bias towards one club nor the other for me. I've, I've got an opinion on which I think is better than the other. I don't necessarily see that as being biased. Um, but I don't sell golf clubs and I'm not here to try and persuade you to go and buy the G400 Max or stick with your G30 or buy the M4. That's not what I'm here to do. What I like doing is hitting golf balls, and if I see a difference I like to, between old and new tech, then I like to relay that information back to you. What you then do with the information, honest to God, it does not bother me either way. We can pick faults all day long. This is how I've seen it. This is what happened. Then we can go and pick faults in it and why it's right or wrong. Like I said, that's purely down to yourselves to interpret the way you wish. But anyway, started off with a G30 driver. And I've got to say, first of all, I said it last week, the important thing for me is that I had to give both drivers a fair crack of a whip in terms of the strikes that I put on the ball. I was swinging the club well enough this morning. I hit the G30 well, more than happy. Um, I didn't like the sound of it, like I said, and I did notice that I was a little bit erratic in terms of where it finished up with the G30. But in terms of performance, I certainly did as best as I could with it. So let's go through these numbers now. So club head speed, 94 mile an hour. And again, pretty consistent with where we were at last week. I think it was 94.6 mile an hour, identical for both clubs last week. 94 mile an hour club head speed, producing a ball speed on average of 140. And again, that's a decent number. Um, spin rate, so don't forget this was the LS tech, so low spinning, on average 2278 in terms of spin. So yeah, anywhere and around there, would be a realistic and decent number. Carrying 225, what have we got in there? Longest being very consistent to be fair, there was one there that carried out 234. Total yardage on average 252, and again, longest ball being 263. Ball launch fairly low. Um, again, with the low spin inversion, and um, we had in terms of loft identical, but again, I think when we go into that, I'll be interested to see the launch angle on the next club will be um, higher. And again, even though the loft is set the same, CG further back, ball popping up and getting a, a higher launch angle is going to become apparent. So, next on screen is the G400 Max. Once again, I hit the ball very well, more than happy with it. I'm a little bit annoyed that we got an average swing speed, club head speed of 95 mile an hour. So we've got a one mile an hour club head speed, which like I said, um, relates to possibly 
two to three yards extra distance in that extra one mile an hour clubhead speed. So obviously for me, perfect scenario is to get those two numbers as close as possible, but on this occasion, there's a mile per hour difference. Um, ball speeds again, 142.7 which again, if you look at the one particular shot, 94.8 club head, 143.5 ball speed, the ratio and efficiency in translating club head speed into ball speed, once again, is very, very good indeed. That's something we've seen with the other clubs and for a while now. Interesting one for me is a spin number. So we're against the LS Tech, don't forget. And we're against a ultra forgiving CG place back high launching driver and yet i did this with all the tests i've done with the g400 max it's always produced an extremely low spin number which is hard to get your head around so it's actually produced a lower spin number on average than the g30 which i find incredible like i said bear in mind all those things i've just mentioned so carry distance 236 on average um again they were very very stable shots 238 being the longest um then you look at total yardage, 262. Um, what have we got? Longest ball, two balls in there at 264, one at 262. Again, stability is interesting. Launching at 15.4, so again, there was that higher launch angle. Really, really interesting to see. So straight away, let's look at numbers head to head. If we just purely look at carry distances, we've got 225 against 236. It's 11 yards of difference. Now, arguably, don't forget to be fair to the G30, on average, one mile per hour slower in swing speed, so there's a little bit of drop off in there. And in the carry distance, there's 10 yards in carry distance overall, on average. Right, launch angle is the interesting one straight away, 15.4 as opposed to 13.8. So, that's the story in terms of numbers, yardages, spin numbers, data. But the next screen I'm going to throw up is the more interesting one for me with the G400 Max because what I was expecting was a yardage gain and I think we've seen that 10 yards difference and I think that's perfectly logical from what I've seen in terms of ball flight and where the balls landed in the range. I think that was what I was probably expecting, 5 or 10 yards gain in terms of distance. I wasn't expecting it to be lower spinning, that surprised me a little bit. But the thing that I was expecting is that the G, what I like in particular about the G400 Max is dispersion. A friend of mine who asked me on a video, uh, who, he said he's not, he's not up for some stick on YouTube, so fair dues to him, I understand that, that's good enough for me. But he went in for a driver fit on Friday, and um, very long story short, G400 Max once again is what he's chose to buy. I won't give you all the different things that he tried, but he went with G400 Max, and because, in yardage differences, he saw bits and bobs between, he tried the M4 and different things, but it was dispersion that persuaded him to buy the G400 Max. And I think that's the big story. This year with drivers, to be honest with you, I've seen it in the Rogue, no great differences in terms of what we've seen um, from yardages on Epic, but dispersion being very, very tight indeed. So this screen that comes up now, red dots G30, blue dots being G400 Max, it is so much better in terms of, and I think this is the big tale because people mentioned that other people have tested drivers and there's very little difference in the last five years. Um, tour averages suggest there is a very little difference in, in drivers over the last so many years. And I understand and get all that. But what I continue to see is these numbers here. And I think the biggest story for me is this. If you consistently find the center of that driver with the same swing speed, with a good swing unlike mine, then the numbers probably don't differ that great. But what I think you see in the G400 Max, a typical example, is if I looked at my strike pattern this morning, it'll be all across that center of that club face, left and right, and you never know, I might even got one out in the middle. But the results stay fairly consistent and stable. And I think that's the big difference in the drivers that I've seen in the last six months or so. And again, I think we've seen it again there with the G400 Max. I make no secret of the fact that I'm a big fan of this golf club um, for stability dispersion reasons. That's the thing that I'm mega impressed with. And every time I get the golf, the club out and put it onto a Sky Track, uh, a TrackMan monitor, these are the numbers that I'm seeing. 
I always vary in terms of my distances, depending on, like I said, how decent I'm striking the ball on the day, but it's the dispersion that sticks out a mile for me. And uh, like I said, mightily impressed with it. Anyway, as ever, look, take it for what it is. It is a very, it's limited numbers in terms of balls. I've got to say, I think that if I'd have, I'd have loved to have had the time to have hit 50, 100 balls of each, and I think the gap would have widened, to be quite honest with you. But that's just an opinion. I can't see that in numbers. But it is limited data. It's got lots of variables in it. And I understand there's areas to potentially critique the way in which this is done. I get all that, that's absolutely fine by me. What I'm trying to do, like I said before, I've seen things that happen in terms of ball flights, in terms of distances. It bears out in numbers from what I'm seeing on the screen when the head-to-heads are coming. So for me, there's been a big difference between 2014, 2015 ping G30 to the G400 Max. I can see a big difference. But the all important thing is it is, does not matter what I nor any other YouTube golf club reviewer thinks. The only thing that matters is how it performs then in your hands. So if you've got a G30, a lot of people are asking me to do this review. If you've got a G30 and you're considering an upgrade, then I think it's worth going to check it out and give it a go. And then see for yourself. <clears throat> you ain't stupid if the numbers aren't there for you then you stick with your G30 anyway as ever thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed it lots of videos to come still at the minute I've just tested an interesting one for me is the uh, the new Callaway golf balls the new chrome soft um, with that new material in which I can't remember the name of but anyway they'll be coming very very soon so plenty to come as ever thumbs up comments down below subscribe if you don't already and uh, I'll see you very very soon